Ladies and gentlemen, um, you know, as you know, um, the Matangalis throughout Fiji, they are blessed with abundance of land. But they're only utilizing a fraction of it. Large part of their land are lying idle. I was in uh, Banwalewu uh, last week and I went to Wainikoro area. Of course, I went to all the three areas. I was in the Kondrobe, uh, right, uh, right uh, near Brekiniwai, Napuka, uh, Udabe. One day, I was there for three days, three and a half days. One day I was on the Boa side, uh, right up to uh, Buribau, Lakutu, Sarwanga. Then one day I was on the Wainukoro side, the last day. A series of events, number of events. And in the Wainukoro side, I met the Tuinandongo, Tuinandongo uh, Ratu Solomone. Um, uh, and I had a good heart to heart Talonoa with him. You probably, those who are familiar with Lambasa, you know that when you go towards Wainukoro, Kilikoso, Daku, uh, Wainikoro, uh, Tainikula, you will see large tracts of land which used to be under sugarcane before are now lying idle because some 30, 40 years ago politicians told the landowners that don't renew the lease, you can do better than what these tenants are doing. And the landowners listened to them, did not renew the land, and decided that they will cultivate it themselves. Unfortunately, they could not cultivate those land because they already had more than enough. And those land are now lying idle under bush. If you look around, you will see a small kind of small hilltop small raised place with some bush and a few mango trees, some coconut tree, some tamarind tree, you will know there was a house before there. Then you look at again this side, you will see again a small hilltop, some mango trees, some coconut tree, some seijan tree and some bush, you know there was a house there. This is the scene when you travel towards Wainikoro. The landowners, the Matangali members were ill-advised. They were ill-advised for political self-grandstanding and for political mileage. Now the landowners, neither are they utilizing that land because they already have land which is reserved land. So, you know, that land which is reserved for Matangali that they know cannot be leased to anyone else for Matangali members and the land which the Matangali members can lease out to anyone. So they already had reserve land, which even the reserve land are underutilized or not utilized fully. A fraction of it is utilized. So now, neither they are not utilizing that leased land which used to be leased, but they have also lost rental income. So I had a good chat with uh, Tuinandongo and I said to them that look, by not leasing out the land, you are doing injustice, not only to yourself, your community members, your children, your Matangali members, and to the country. Because this land, or any land, which is lying idle, not utilized, and therefore doesn't generate any return, it has no value. Simple basic rule in economics. Any resource, whether it's a car, whether it's a tractor, a truck, a house, land, if it does not generate any return, any, any, any positive return, then it has no value. If you ask any economist, they'll tell you one of the valuation methodology is basically how much return that property. So if you want to buy a property, say, what's, how, how much return will it generate? Can it grow good cane? Can it, you know, uh, grow vegetables or rice? Or if you see a house, they will say, how many flats are there? How many, what would be the rental income? So based on that, they'll value it. So if the land is lying idle, 
under bush, it does not generate any return, it's zero value. Simple. So he said to me, uh, Minister, the, to the Nong, he said, Minister, I've been telling TLTB, quickly lease it out. It doesn't look good. I feel bad. I feel very mandua. And that is not only in Wainikoro, in Tunalia, you go uh, this uh, back road, Momi back road, a lot of places. Good quality land lying idle, unutilized. So today we are here to have a heart to heart discussion to see that how you can utilize the resources that you have for your own benefit, benefit of yourself, your Madangali members. And when you do that, then collectively, the nation also benefits, country also benefits, country grows. And over the last two years, with COVID-19, I want to thank the farmers, the landowners, who continued to push agriculture during that period. Difficult times, but our farmers continued to you know, uh, do the activity. Our landowners continued to uh, assist them, support them. It was only agriculture sector that held the fort. And during the two years, our exports went up. Our exports went up. We started to lift more. We took advantage. And in 2020, for the first time ever, our exports exceeded non-sugar exports. Separate sugar. Apart from sugar, agricultural exports went up substantially. First time ever in 2020, it surpassed 100 million dollar mark. Never ever non-sugar exports, remove sugar. The other vegetables, and I'll talk about what the export, went up to 106 million. Yangona was the number one. Kava, dalo, cassava, ginger, turmeric, assorted vegetables to, um, to New Zealand and Australia. We kept on pushing. We kept on pushing. And the growth continues. We don't want to kill that momentum. We want to bring the foreign currency, Australian dollar, New Zealand dollar, American dollar. In fact, we are not able to fulfill the demand. For, for kava, we're getting kava from Vanuatu and then exporting to Australia and New Zealand. That's the level of gap we have. We need to rise up and produce our own rice. We need to produce more kava. We need to produce more turmeric. We need to produce more nduruka. We need to produce more ginger. We need to produce more assorted vegetables. The tourism sector has opened. It's going to again uh, you know, start you know, um, uh, uh, in, in terms of boosting demand, there's, there's winter in New Zealand and Australia, they'll come here. So it's, it's going to start in a few weeks' time, the flow of inflow of tourists. And the hotels will demand more vegetables, more smoothies, and therefore demand for our fruit pulps. There's massive amount of guava now. There was just, we just concluded mango season. There's pineapples all over. There's watermelon all over. It's year-round. And we need to utilize our fruits to make smoothies that is served to the tourists in the hotels. We can't afford to waste anything. So ladies and gentlemen, I want to say that you have opportunity to utilize the resources for your own benefit. Gone are those days when you think that you know you are okay, you are self-sufficient, you are okay with whatever you produce. There's a lot of idle land that needs to put, uh, needs to be placed under use, so that your family can benefit, your matangali can benefit, and in the same time, in that growth, the entire country can benefit. So we are here today to support you. Have a talonoa with you. That there were some farmers who are doing vegetable farming here. They needed um, irrigation kits so that you know they can continue um, uh, vegetable production during the dry season. So there's five irrigation kits, uh, and we. Our staff came down and did the assessment of their need. So we've got it. We'll hand over the offer letters. And uh, one irrigation kit, he, kit is here to do the demo. And the other irrigation kits will be delivered from tomorrow. Uh, he mentioned to me that the Matangali members have a lot of land here. They've got a lot of animal, but they want to fence it. We've got 20 coils of uh, barbed wire and about 50 uh, iron post there. I want to thank a donor that assisted me in getting the 20 calls, Pacific Wires, uh, the Pacific uh, 
uh, wire industry has uh, provided the 20 coils of um, uh, barbed wire and uh, very generous. They said that we want to support the Matangali members here. Uh, they, you know, they've done a lot for the, for the people, for the country. Uh, the um, rice mill, as you know, we are uh, promoting rice. Uh, there's some very good rice farmers in this area. Uh, uh, and we uh, want, we don't want them to go and mill rice somewhere, you know, far down there, no Azombao, somewhere. We want them to, you know, mill their rice for their own consumption right here. So we want to incentivize you to produce rice. We provide rice seeds free, not an issue. We provide vegetable seeds free. We, we have brought seeds today to give it out to you. Any planting material will give it to you at no cost. All we want is to, you know, you know you need to get motivated and put your land under use. Na langu chose bana kandi le matangali no imbuli na korokombavo. O go bila bila ba le buna sinani kwa ni maidingo mana vibuke ni matani tu. O bila taka ba le buna na kena soli mana ya lo bina kana bukuni vibuke no no balavu ke to sanga tiko kina na matangali no imbuli. Itu mai rai dan kuah ni, so mai bawa tukar nana sesanga ni, ni itu umbai ni bulu makau. Itu so mai rai dan nak kena bawa tukar nasi ngan kuah. Bawa bina bina tak balik besar nana nung ni bebuke, bebuke ni matan itu. Bawa si bina bawa bina tak balik bina minista ni yang kerja. Ena nona lama mai mai soli nana bebuke, balik tana ni mami umbai ni bulu makau nasi ngan kuah. Uh, my name is Janesh Kumar and uh, I'm from Nawai Domba. I'm the advisory councillor of uh, Dakan Daka, Akilmain, Randa and Tunanya N. And uh, I'm, uh, my occupation is a uh, farmer and a uh, minibus operator. After receiving the uh, rice field, the farmers are very excited and some of the farmers they are uh, more excited because uh, they don't have to go long, long uh, miles to go and mill the, their rice. And plus that there are some more farmers coming in our cluster and they will be planting more rice. Because uh, now you can see the price of the rice food is getting up, price is getting high. And uh, our main concern is uh, the rice because rice is we can consume every day. And all the people are consuming rice nearly every day.